Shiftry got a huge buff that not enough people are taking advantage of. Its base 100 attack is solid, but it's always just been too slow with that base 80 speed. Luckily, it now gets the ability Wind Rider, which boosts attack by one stage when you set up Tailwind, along with the benefit of doubling its speed. This also gives it full immunity to wind moves like Blizzard or Heat Wave, for example, which comes in super clutch. Stab Leaf Blades now hit like a truck, along with things like Knock Off, and we can even use Sucker Punch when the Tailwind runs out. Shiftery is still somehow at zero usage, and it's time to show this thing's true potential. So Shiftery feels like it got one of the most powerful buffs in Scarlet and Violet, and still people are not putting any respect on our leafy, windy fella. And today we're going to go ahead and show him some love. Now, if you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k. I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Registeel. And as you guessed it, I actually also have a nice shiny doorknob. So while we would ordinarily be friends today, we are mortal enemies. And uh, we're just kind of staring at each other with our beady red eyes. And if there's one thing Registeel is going to do as a lead, that is lay down some stealth rock. So we go ahead and compare sizes as uh, they actually end up moving first, which may tell me that he's faster, but... For the most part, probably a speed tie. So we both set up our stealth rock, and now I'm like, well, I don't really know what this thing wants to do to me, but I'm just gonna earthquake it as it turns out there's gonna be a special attacking one, and the focus miss actually hits. So it turns out those eyes can see pretty well as uh, I just go for that earthquake. So it honestly, it looks like his is more physically defensive, whereas that focus blast didn't do a whole lot to mine as I'm just max special defense. So we scouted out a little bit what uh, our big metal orbs are doing here, just pondering each other at this point, and we're not really going to get anywhere with just kind of trading attacks here. So I decide I'm going to switch into the Drag Algae. I can Focus Blast them and just kind of get some good chip, as I imagine they probably don't take special attacks as well, but instead they actually end up switching themselves into the Gliscor. So Big Meaty Claws comes in just ready to Earthquake my Registeel, but instead now they're met with a Seahorse who actually doesn't really enjoy being Earthquaked either. So Kind of a bad position in my end, as they do, of course, get the freaking Toxic Orb. Because if Gliscor is going to do anything, it's going to be poisoned and annoying. So, I decide to actually stay in here. I'm thinking either they go for like a Sword Stance, or they overpredict me to switch out. Which they do, and then I miss my Draco Meteor, which is annoying. So, the knockoff gets rid of my Assault Vest. We are now no longer looking like a fashionable seahorse. And I miss my Draco, which sucks, because now... Surely they're just going to go for something like an Earthquake, and then I'm just going to swap and do my Oricario to try to avoid that Earthquake, but instead they actually end up switching into the Slow King. So we've got some mix matching of, of, of switching going around here, but as I'm looking at it, this ends up not being a super bad matchup for me. Now, Galarian Slow King, while it is going to be generally pretty specially defensive, I know that they can't really touch me, and I can kind of freely set up a Quiver Dance here. If they want to hit me on the special side, I now give them a nice little pom-pom cheerleader dance, and I get that spadef boost, of course, along with the speed and the special attack. So they do actually have the coverage with the power jump. I throw some rocks at me, and it doesn't even do half, which is amazing, because now... I can freely go for just a Revelation Dance. I want to just kind of scout for some damage here, and I'll tell you what, there was no damage to be had. It literally does nothing. And uh, that's kind of fine, because as now they go for a second Power Gem, I am kind of uh, hurting a little bit here. So here's the thing. I decide to now go for the Terra Ground, and uh, I'm thinking, first of all, I can get some good damage here, but also, being ground type, can I maybe live a Power Gem? Probably not, but I'm going to put the damn Earth on my head anyway. And here's the situation. I actually go for the Terra Blast, which it turns out, first of all, there's a couple things going on here. Terra Blast is not useful on Oricorio, I find out, because Revelation Dance actually takes the type of your Terra. And uh, that also doesn't end up doing enough to kill it. And then a Power Gem kills me with a crit. So, first of all, I should have clicked Revelation Dance because it's just a stronger Terra Blast, essentially. But in the long run, it didn't look like a Revelation Dance was going to be able to kill anyway. And I uh, probably shouldn't have done that. So now we got some making up to do. At least I did get some good chip on the Glow King, which is kind of bittersweet because this asshole just likes to switch out and regenerate that health anyway. But as I'm looking at it here, I kind of have a position to go into our kite friend, the Shiftry. So here's the thing. I expect them to probably want to switch out. I know that, uh, you know, with that regenerator option, they want to get that thing some more health. And while, you know, the Tailwind is a risky play here for kind of figuring they might go for a Sludge Bomb, 
I decided to just go for the Tailwind, and it works out because they actually end up swapping into the Hitmon top. And as I go for that Tailwind, now we're just flying around like some crazy ass Wind Rider, and I get that physical attack boost, which is amazing because this is actually a Technician Hitmon top. It does not have the Intimidate, and guess what? A plus one Leaf Blade is gonna be enough to just cleanly slice him and dice him. So that takes care of Hitmon top. And now we are chilling behind some Tailwind. We're gonna be faster than everything they've got. I have plus one attack and we are feeling pretty strong with our little peg legs over here. So in comes the Alola Ninetales. And of course with that 50% defense boost from the snow, it does in fact have enough bulk to be able to take one. And then it actually sets up the Aurora Veil. So this thing's gonna be extra bulky here, but there's a fun dynamic that could happen here. I go for the second Leaf Blade, doesn't quite knock this thing out, but they actually click the blizzard, and now we're just riding around on a freaking blizzard in the middle of the snow. Wind Rider <laughs> allows us uh, to not be affected by blizzard, which is absolutely amazing. And then one more Leaf Blade actually takes care of it. Now it's important to note, they could have clicked Moonblast. They also turned out to have like less than 200 EVs in speed, which allowed me to be faster there even without the Tailwind. And that is kind of crazy because now, as the Salamence does come in, Intimidate Noxus back down to just plus one attack. But I can go for a nice little knockoff here and get rid of the Life Orb. It does, of course, live because of that Aurora Veil. And they are going to be a special Salamence, which we actually barely hang on and leave the Flamethrower, which is amazing. Getting rid of that Life Orb allowed Shiftry to clutch that live out. We're hanging on by a damn thread, but sometimes that's all you need. So we're actually just punishing shit through the Aurora Veil, which is amazing. And uh, now they're going to go ahead back into the Registeel. So taking care of the Salamence there was amazing. Along with that Ninetales, the Aurora Veil is no longer going to be up as long as we get rid of it. And I'm just going to go for the knockoff here before surely they're just going to be able to pick me off. I get rid of that Leftovers along with a nice little amount of chip. And the Flash Cannon is going to take care of the Shiftry. But not before we were able to poke some nice little holes in the squad. And we got to see if we can pull it back here. So, the bad news is the Aurora Veil is going to still be up for a few turns. And I don't have a whole lot of offensive firepower. So, I decided to bring out the little Koala. We're ready to just eat some Eucalyptus and freaking chill. And also get some super effective Earthquakes off. And try to burn off some of these Aurora Veil turns. Because listen, Registeel is bulky as hell and especially behind that aurora veil it's going to be annoying to kill so they go for the focus blast it does in fact focus miss which is great and i am just over here chilling with my log i feel like sometimes you got to have your emotional support log you know what i'm saying so i decided to go for the body slam this turn just in case they want to opt to switch on the earthquake and also it doesn't the damage doesn't really matter i, I body slam there just because i do actually also get the para but more importantly, as they miss the next Focus Blast, it is still going to be in range for the next Earthquake to kill because the Aurora Veil is going to wear off. So, um, Focus Blast is out here just betraying my dude, but the Aurora Veil does wear off here. I can now just go ahead and... I don't know how this Koala has the ability to Earthquake, but sometimes a little guy just has the power to shake the entire Earth and then knock out the freaking Titan that is the big Steel Ball Registeel. So... Down goes the Reggie, and honestly, Koala's chilling in a pretty good position here. I'm actually at full health thanks to the Focus Blast misses, which I would have been able to take a few of just because I think doesn't have the greatest offensive uh, special power. But now they can go into whatever they like, and the main problem at this point is this freaking Glyce score. Big Meaty Claws, of course, is uh, going to be kind of their win condition at this point, and I really could use some chip on the guy, and I really only have one easy answer for that, and that is going to be with my Dusknoir. So, I decided to switch directly into the Cyclopath here because I'm a Choice Banded Ghost with an Ice Punch and I'm like, okay, I can bring this thing in, I can take attacks from it all day, I can also frisk that Toxic Orb, which tells me nothing, thank you for that, Mr. Dusknoir. We saw the Toxic Orb, but uh, they actually end up going for the knockoff, it is gonna get rid of my Choice Band, which I'm feeling like, okay, that does kinda suck because now it's at, it's at full health. And I'm like, do I have the offense to knock this thing out uh, with an Ice Punch here? They go for another knockoff here just because uh, it is going to be super effective. But without my item, it's not enough to knock me out. And it also takes an Ice Punch and lives to tell the tale. Because I need my damn Choice Band to be doing any damage here. But at least without my Choice Band on, I can go for a Poltergeist in case they want to opt to switch. They actually end up staying and go for one more knockoff, which I actually live. And then I just rip his Toxic Orb off him. 
and then beat the hell out of him with it. So that's going to take care of the Gliscor, and that is pretty much all I needed with that, was that thing to be out of the way, because the final Mon being the Slowking is uh, chilling at less than half health, and at least if there's one thing I can do, at least be faster than, is a freaking Slowking, and Dustnor doesn't generally outspeed stuff, but I can now just rip this thing's vest off him and then smack him in the face with it, and that is going to take care of the Slowking, and that is going to be the end of the game. So I thought that was just an interesting match, and uh, look at Dusknor actually doing some stuff here. So super fun match, and with that, that is going to bring us into the next game. So this time, my opponent is working with five legendary-like fellas and a Gallade, which is going to be quite scary, but I have a, 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 w a wooden doll that's also a a kite of some sort, and I'm not afraid. So let's jump into it. All right, so this time my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Cobalion, and I, of course, have my nice and polished doorknob. Also, shout out to freaking metal textures in this game looking actually pretty damn nice. Registeel be shiny as hell. So, they end up going for the taunt. I figure if it's a Cobalion lead, it's probably like a stealth rock, and the taunt option was there, but I click it anyway just because why the hell not? So, problem is now I'm in range of being beat the hell up by some weird Cabalian fists. So, I decide to switch into the Dust Noir thinking maybe they go for that super effective fighting. And I can come in with my little ghostly tail and also check out what he's working with. It does have the Focus Sash and actually just set up the Stealth Rock, which is fine. Because most of the time, you know, Dust Noir is going to be in a situation where it's going to be like a Will O Wisp kind of like random defensive set. But instead, I am a full choice band offensive attacker. So they go for the taunt, which I kind of expected, as they don't really want to be will o -Wisp, But I actually just go for that choice banded earthquake, and it's going to be able to break this thing's focus sash, and also break his little heart with some uh, pretty solid damage there. So uh, I, of course, am locked into the earthquake. I decide to just go for it, as I actually eat an iron head like it's nobody's business, and a second earthquake does take care of of the Cobalion. So, down goes the non-futuristic Cobalion, like a freaking caveman, and uh, now they can switch into whatever they like. So, in comes little My, My Little Pony looking ass, and Keldeo is kind of a weird fella here. I obviously don't really want to go for an earthquake, and most of the time these are going to be like a special attacking option, and I'm like, you know who's a guy that can just sponge some special attacks? Mystery the damn seahorse. So, I do in fact resist this thing's dual stab, which is amazing, as I do just go for the surf. Does a crazy little twirl, by the way. That is a freaking acrobatic ass horse right there. But I obviously take nothing from that. And at this point, I'm gonna go for the sludge wave. I get some nice little stab damage on whatever they want to switch in, plus that adaptability. It's gonna hurt at least a little bit here. So, of course, they do switch into the big old booger dog, and a sludge wave isn't gonna do a whole lot to this fellow. I probably should have gone for the Draco Meteor, but I do at least get a crit, which feels kinda nice. But the problem is now that this thing has both the ability to set up, it also has coverage against the seahorse, and I kinda like this as an option to switch into things like that Keldeo. So, I'm actually just gonna switch right into the Dusknoir, and I know, obviously, this thing has the potential to be running something like a Crunch, but I bring in the Cyclopath just because, honestly, I don't look super great in this matchup anyway. Kind of want to see what this thing's working with, as uh, it is going to go for the bulk up. So, Buff Dog is now a little bit more scary, because now with that defense boost, it can also take, like, a Choice Banded Earthquake, no problem. And also with that attack, depending on the coverage, this thing can be a bit of a damn problem. So I'm just gonna go for the Earthquake. At this point, there's kind of no reason to click anything else, but it is gonna go for the Psychic Fangs, which I can live, and even though I have a base HP of like four, I am able to take that, ain't no problem. So Earthquake, of course, with that defensive boost is not gonna be able to uh, knock it out, but it does at least get some considerable chip to put it in range to where I'm not super afraid of the Okie Dogie. I still think this thing's name is ridiculous. His name is Okie Dokie, but in, he's a dog. I don't know. I, I died to the next Psychic Fangs, which is kind of fine. And uh, it does eat a little bit of leftovers. As now, at least I do have it below half. And I'm like, well, that's kind of exactly what I needed. Because now I can go into the Oricorio. And while I would love to get up a nice little quiver dance in this situation, I'm just going to go for the Air Slash. It's super effective. It does not miss, luckily. And it is also in range to just take care of it. So, down goes the Okie. And now they have a revenge switch into whatever they like against my poor little friggin' bird over here. So, in comes the Gallade. And I'm looking at this thinking maybe I can actually live an attack here and go for a Quiver Dance and then Stonks. But, 
It does, in fact, just knock me out with that Psycho Cut and the crit. It probably just had enough damage regardless. And down goes the bird. So, I feel like I actually have a pretty free switch into the Shiftry here. And as I'm bringing the beast in, obviously I cannot be touched by the Psychic Attack being a Dark type. But then I kind of second guessed myself and thinking that, hold on, if I, this is actually just a Jolly Gallade. I was thinking that my Oricorio was actually modest, so I wasn't plus speed nature. So then I'm like, the thing might be not Choice Scarf. I decided to go for the Terra Ghost just in case he wants to try to bot me, you know, with that close combat. But instead, they actually end up switching into the Keldeo, who I kind of benefit from being Ghost also, because now I can't be Sacred Sworded. And I just look more badass with a ghost on my head, so I actually probably should not have committed that Terra. However, that is going to allow me to now go for that nice little Tailwind. And once again, you already know the deal, we are riding this shit like the wind. And uh, we are going to be not only faster, but also with that attack boost, going to be pretty damn powerful. So, I am faster, I have the coverage with the Leaf Blade, and it's time to slice him up and no more pony for you. So that is an easy, nice little clean kill, and Shiftery is out here schmoovin'. So one of the very nice things obviously about the Tailwind is that it gives us a plus two speed, meaning our speed is doubled and as they decide to go into the Gallade, this thing is definitely going to be Choice Scarf considering they switched, but also they probably imagine that they are still faster than Shiftry under the Tailwind. So they decide to opt to go for the Terra Dark, which is going to now be able to boost up their Night Slash to the levels where it will be able to knock me out. But I am definitely still faster, and a Leaf Blade is enough to slice him up. Generally, Gallade's the guy doing the slicing, but not today. It does finish him off. And now, as uh, I do still have, what, like one turn left of my Tailwind, they're actually going to bring in the different kind of Gallade guy. And guess what? I'm going to do the same thing to you. Slice you up. A critical hit likely does not matter. But it is pretty nice to have that uh, extra high chance of the crits, you know, with that Leaf Blade. So that takes care of it. The Tailwind does peter out. I don't know who the hell Peter is, but he's always taking away my damn Tailwind. And now the final Mon is going to be the Zamazenta. So Shield Dog does, of course, get that physical defense boost. And at this point, I'm just going to die to a crunch side of it. I, didn't, I kind of figured it didn't have coverage, but then I'm like, yeah, surely Dog can do bite move. So Crunch does take care of me. But with this thing being the final Mon, all I really have to do is uh, at least live an attack with the Registeel. If I can get a Thunder Wave off on the fella, I can then be faster, and then things like a Draco Meteor, along with uh, some shenanigans potentially with the Kamala, can finish it off. So I bring in the Doorknob, feeling as healthy as ever, and uh, it goes for the Crunch. Tells me maybe this thing is going to be banded, something like that. I take it nicely. The Thunder Wave is going to basically solidify the fact that now I can outspeed with stuff and slowly try to whittle it down. And Registeel just eats a bite of an apple right in front of this thing's face, just as pure disrespect. So, I'm just going to go for heavy slimes here at this point and try to hope for some paras and shenanigans like that. But they decide it's not worth the time and they're actually just going to go ahead and dip out. So, that is going to be the end of that one and uh, a super interesting game. But I do have one more bonus match for you and you should definitely stick around because this one is crazy. Also, if you've made it this far into the video, first of all, you are my favorite. But second of all, you should just hit that like button because... Why not? YouTube enjoys it and it really makes a difference. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the game. So this time my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Landorus. And you know what I hate? Landorus. This thing as a lead could potentially be Choice Scarf. It could just be here to U-turn. One thing is for certain though, my body is clear as hell. I guess, I mean it really isn't, but I can't be intimidated, which is kind of cool. And I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to mind my own business, set up some Stealth Rock, but instead I'm actually taunted, which is annoying. I'm sick and tired of my damn... Reggie Steel being taunted, but it's really not that big of a deal because now I can just go for a heavy slam, try to get some chip off on the guy, and I kind of figured they would expect me to swap and go for a U turn, which is why I just basically go for that heavy slam, but they set up the stealth rock of their own, and I do also get hit by some Rocky Helmet. I feel like Reggie Steel would want be one of the mons that would not give a damn about touching a pointy helmet, but it's fine. I don't really mind the chip, and also Heavy Slam's not doing anything. So I decided to switch on out of here. I imagine they probably Earthquake, which I feel like he, Dusknoir can likely come in here, take kind of, and then I can scare it with an Ice Punch. For the most part, this Landorus is going to give me some damn problems. This thing has been haunting my Wi-Fi battles for freaking years now, and uh, they actually end up going for the U-turn here, going to be able to pivot on the Dusknoir, but at least we do have the benefit of people still not knowing that I'm going to be like a bandit set. So they decide to go into the Mandibuzz. And Mandibuzz comes in here flapping. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to Ice Punch you too. I'm not afraid. But it turns out 
I am actually afraid because the foul play just straight up kills me. And I'm like, well, that was probably not the best idea as uh, Dustnor goes down. Kind of fine with that because now it at least allows me a, a free switch in or at least you know, a safe switch in as I can bring in the log. The absolute beast, the monster with the log comes in and we're just drowsing. So I decided to just go for the rapid spin. I do want to get rid of the stealth rock. It's kind of something that I want to prioritize in terms of shiftery being able to come in and still have its focus ash intact. But they actually just go right back into freaking Landorus, who is just standing on the air like an absolute god. And I do at least rapid spin away those stealth rocks that it set up. But it can, of course, just kind of freely set them up. And as now, I'm intimidated and not the hardest hitting fella. I can't really stay in and go for attacks here. So I imagine that this thing probably either wants to set back up the stealth rock. They're either just going to go for the earthquake or something like a U-turn. I decide my best option is to bring in the... Uh, Oricorio. So I bring in the cheerleader and Woodstock is an absolute freaking monster here. Just kidding. It's not really. But I can take a U-turn and uh, obviously not going to do a whole lot of damage. But the bad news is now we're just swapping and they can get a better matchup. So trying to gain positioning in this match is going to be tough, especially with the freaking lander is coming in. You turn it around all crazy, and as they bring in the Lava Frog, I'm thinking, ooh, this is actually kind of a nice little surprise for me, because I do have the surprise Terra coverage if I want to bust out the Terra Ground. Now, I also know this thing's most likely going to be a special attacker, and with the Quiver Dance, I know that I can take an attack no problem here. So, it turns out the thing's actually going to go for a taunt. See, I'm being taunted all over the damn place today, but... I already have my dance up, which is kind of fine by me, by me, and at this point, I can just go for that Terra Ground and then bust out the Revelation Dance, which again, is just a more powerful uh, Terra Blast, which the game doesn't actually even tell you, you kind of just have to figure it out. So, they're going to end up going into the Galarian Slow King, and while they probably did not expect the ground coverage, it works against this thing too, so I'm like, okay, that switch is actually kind of fine by me. I put the damn bowl cut on my head. And uh, right, we got a, the strongest neck possible to hold the entire damn earth. Uh, but of course, the Revelation Dance now being ground type is going to do a whole bunch of damage to the fella. So I dance around a little bit, shake the pom-poms, and it is going to be a nice little two-hit KO on the Slow King here. And I kind of imagine they probably switch, so I'm actually just going to go for the, uh, the Air Slash at this point. I know, you know that thing's swapping out, going to be able to come back in pretty healthy later. And then also, the freaking Landorus is still here. Uh, being annoying. I can freely switch in on a ground move, but instead the air slash does catch him off guard And not only that, but it also makes it, it puts it in range for a two-hit KO here So by the grace of Arceus, I do not in fact miss my second air slash and that is gonna take care of the Landorus Which is great because again that thing was gonna be an absolute menace for kind of the remainder of the match And we're getting ourselves a bit of momentum here, you know with the Oricorio. So on the Revenge Switch, they're going to bring in the Hydrapple. Now, this is kind of a weird matchup because obviously they've seen the coverage with the Air Slash. And if I know a Hydrapple, it's going to Terra Steel here. So I decided to predict the Terra Steel and go for the Ground Type Revelation Dance. But instead, it actually just does not Terra. And I've been freaking bamboozled here. Allows them to then go for the Giga Drain. But with my special defense, I'm actually just barely able to hang on, which is... Uh, amazing because now we live to see another day and at this point I'm like fine I'm going for the air slash this time if they didn't have the Terra Steel they, they wouldn't have used it so it turns out they actually just playing some crazy mind games because they do actually bust out the Terra poison here and I really wish I would have clicked the ground type revelation dance now and they kind of win the they definitely win the Terra mind game there because I go for that air slash and while it doesn't do a whole lot it does actually get the flinch which is kind of hilarious because now I'm free to go for my coverage with the Revelation Dance uh, and also important to note that uh, that Air Slash damage looks like that thing was going to be Assault Vest which a lot of Hydrapples are so I kind of uh, expect that to be Assault Vest but them expecting the ground move they actually just go right into the Mandibuzz here and I'm like well god damn it I'm just going to Air Slash now and just moral of the story I'm trying to get some chip with the Oricorio. The bad news about this little fella is that once you Terra you just lose all um, power to go for electric attacks, which does suck in this situation, but at least I got one flinch there with the air slash, got some chip on the mandibuzz, and uh, it does take me out, you know, with the U-turn there. So, with the Oricorio going down, I'm kind of in a spot where it feels like the remainder of this match, the shiftery is going to be my win condition, however, there is still some problems in the way for it. Most likely going to be this freaking Lava Frog. And as they go into the Heatran, I'm kind of forced to bring in the Dragalgy. Now, I know it likely does have the coverage on me. However, I have Focus Blast, 
And uh, I do take the Earth Power super nicely and actually connect on a Focus Blast, which is great because that does, you know, at least a nice amount of chip to this thing. But we do get the Spadef drop, which is going to put it in range, uh, or at least close to where a Focus Blast is going to kill it if I can freaking connect. So, Assault Vest, Drag Algae can take at least another you know, Earth Power here. And I decide, you know what, they're probably going to switch here. Judging by how their playstyle has been, I can kind of expect uh, a swap here, especially because they have this freaking helmet fella, uh, the, uh, the, the slow queen here. So I go for that Draco Meteor. It's going to do way more than a, uh, than a Focus Blast would, but it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. And this thing is probably going to be especially defensive. And also, with that special attack drop, I'm not super keen to stay in here and just go for another attack. So, expecting something like a Psychic move, I'm actually just going to go back into the Registeel. So, they're going to Future Sight, and uh, Registeel does not give a shit about the future or your Sight, because obviously I don't care about taking a Psychic move. And as I'm looking at it here, that could be a good opportunity for me to try to bring in the Shiftry to not be affected by that Future Sight later. But I'm actually just going to go ahead and take this opportunity to set up the Stealth Rock here. I know that that's going to kind of hinder, you know, switch-ins at least... You know, with the Heatran, it's going to hurt the Mandibuzz. And in general, I need some chip on things for Shiftry to be a nice little late game win condition for me here. So, they actually end up going for the uh, Chili Reception. Now, their team doesn't really benefit from the snow being up, but it does cover for them being able to kind of get a nice little switch into the Heatran. So, ordinarily, I don't really care to be melted by a damn Heatran, but... I am a calm max HP, max special defense Registeel, so I'm feeling like I can definitely take an attack here. And also, I have the Earthquake on my end, so I'm like, you know what? Registeel kind of honestly looked really nice in the rest of this match, especially with Landorus gone. I take an Earth Power absolutely no problem, and then I can just finish him off with that Earthquake. So. With the Heatran gone, that really kind of opens the door for my Shiftry. And again, that's kind of the end game that I'm going to be playing towards. So the Future Sight do does, in fact, hit the Registeel. It does not matter because it doesn't hurt at all. And uh, I'm just over here with my metal sausage fingers, just having a nice little time dancing in the snow. So after some leftovers, they can now switch into whatever they like, and they're going to go into the Hydrapple. Again, most of their threats at this point are just special attackers, and Registeel does a few things well, and mostly just sponges up special attacks. So I can go for the Earthquake, and it's actually kind of funny. I am faster uh, than the freaking Apple Dragon, and an Earth Power is not looking like it's going to be quite enough to be a two-hit KO. So this kind of puts me in a weird position. So here's the thought process. I mostly would like to have... Registeel go down on this matchup before I'm able to knock out the Hydrapple because if I can bring in Shifri versus this Hydrapple I can kind of freely get up uh, the Tailwind and then I do look good against whatever they have left so I do actually not go down uh, to that last Earth Power which is kind of annoying most of the time Registeel likes to live stuff but I'm like please just if you would have died there that actually would have been kind of nice so I go for the Thunder Wave just because um, I, I obviously want this thing to die to this matchup, but also the switch is kind of likely, and I know that they have the flying type, obviously, with the Earthquake. It comes in with the Mandibuzz, and it does not take Stealth Rock Chip, which tells me this thing is uh, Heavy Duty Boots, but now he's Heavy Duty Paralyzed, so freaking enjoy that, buddy. Now, there's two Mons that are giving Shiftry a problem at this point, and that is, again, the Heatran in the back, but also Mandibuzz is so bulky, and it still just seems to have a decent bit of health left. But I'm actually just going to make the aggressive play and go right into the Shiftry here. I'm thinking maybe this thing goes for something like a Defog. I can come in freely, and it actually just gets fully paralyzed, which is pretty nice. Now, I do, of course, still have my Focus Ash intact. If they want to go for flying coverage, I know that I can take at least one of them. And that allows me to then set up the Tailwind. So once again, we are fast. We are riding the damn wind. And our attack is looking nice. So they actually go for the U-turn here. It is going to be four times super effective. But of course, I can live. And uh, this is going to allow a swap into the... They go into the Slow King here. Probably mostly as a sack. Because uh, with that Tailwind, I have so much attack. And I have the super effective nice little stab knockoff. But they mostly just go into the Glow King because they want that thing to just grab some health back. And this is really going to be quite the battle for this endgame. Uh, because Buddy knows what he's doing with the switches. So I go for the knockoff. And in comes friggin' Pebbles. Who does not take quite enough damage from the knockoff here. I do get rid of his boots, however. Which is nice because that means now he can no longer switch back in. And as I figure a Leaf Blade kills, it actually does not. But the Paralyze friggin' saves our life here. Because that full para with this thing living on one health. 
was uh, super clutch. I can then just finish it with another Leaf Blade. And uh, that is going to do it for the Mandibuzz, which is amazing because that thing could have definitely been able to stop a good bit of momentum there. But the Tailwind is going to peter out. And the good news is, however, I am actually faster uh, than I think everything they have left, even without the Tailwind. I do, of course, still retain that attack boost. And as they go into the Glow King here, I'm like, well, they don't have the option to Terra. They do still have the item in a knockoff is going to go ahead and get rid of it. So down goes the Glow King. It actually gets rid of a Lagging Tail, which is kind of fun. It probably tells me it was more of like a... Uh, trick set and now they're down to two Pokemon left first of all We have this damn regenerating apple that has been annoying the entire time and it also has the skull and crossbones But at the amount of health this thing is at I can't obviously outspeed and a knockoff does just take care of it So here's the thing their final mon is actually gonna be a Rampardos and Rampardos most of the time is gonna be scarf and if it is it could have just outsped the shiftry which leads me to believe maybe it's not gonna be scarf and as they bring in the Rampardos here, I'm thinking, okay, my safest bet is probably just to go for the Sucker Punch. Now, if it does just end up being Scarf, Sucker Punch is my best play if it's not a Leaf Blade kills. But I go for the Sucker Punch just on the chance that it is going to be faster. And it turns out it actually goes for the Blizzard. Buddy is working with the special attacking Rampardos, which is kind of hilarious. And I actually kind of vibe with it. It's something I would do because this thing is such a physical attacker that running like a Specs Rampardos has to be what that thing is to catch people off guard. And that is the second blizzard we have wind rode today. We're just riding blizzards high today. And one more sucker punch takes care of it. And that is going to be the end of the game. A ridiculously long match. And it ended out to be a very interesting one. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.